Okay guys, girls, hello, welcome back and uh, today let's have a little bit of fun. Let's do some observational skills. Coming up is a video clip and I'm not going to show you a still because that will give the game away. And what I'd like you to do is to observe what's going on in the clip first of all. Okay, so now you've seen the clip, very, very short clip, just note down in the comments what you've seen first of all. This is how you observe the world generally, but there is a point to this, so be patient with me, and I'd like to explain later about how I'm uh, showing things, and I need to make people more aware of what's going on in videos that I do show. So jot down below what you think, stop the video, and then we will uh, reverse the clip and then go back and see what's going on. Okay, so we'll reverse the video back and I'll tell you what I was trying to show you. You probably got it, is the color scheme of the work bag compared to the toolbox, which is mine. That's the one on the left hand side black and green i'm actually quite proud of that but i didn't say anything but there's a lot more information you can pick up on this video and you probably already got the impression that it's cold weather because of the woolly hat that's been worn the fact that you're watching this because i'm a mechanic is is just natural and this in the film trade is a mise-en-scene which is a scenery that is around the subject okay so the only thing you really should have been concentrating on is the subject itself which is the person carrying a heavy bag walking towards the bench yeah but all the other subconscious things that are put in there i.e the land rover on the ramp some people have noticed that the compressor is in his natural environment and the lorries the toolbox and the equipment the bench and everything like that that is all natural so this is what filmmakers do when they make films they try to put things in which make you feel that it is what it should be okay anybody who's looking for stuff that's trying to learn stuff and i do this when i'm looking at films when i'm watching videos i look around to see what else is going on so you can get the impression generally this is a busy truck workshop daft trucks and a land rover on the ramp and that's the odd one out actually because it is a land rover it's not really supposed to be in a commercial vehicle workshop but the place has a contract to service those sort of vehicles so the weather yeah the time of year has got to be cold because of the jacket hanging up and also the guy is wearing a uh, jumper and a woolly hat yeah with overalls so you know it is that time of the year plus it's daytime you can see up there but the lights are on as well which means that there's not enough bright light outside so that gives you again a uh, setting for the time of year if you look to the bench down on the left left to uh, center you see rags on the bench the workshop uses rags i'm sure that there'll be some nosy people who would zoom in and see what the registration plate is of the lf okay so you probably noticed as well that the bag is incredibly heavy Okay, so this is more of a show me, don't tell me type of uh, scenario now and uh, your skills, observational skills. I want to sharpen them up a bit because it's important. Okay, so what I have is a tool here uh, for holding the clap in against a spring to hold a ball joint in. Okay, so engineering mind, you can see that there is a, uh, a ring retained by two bolts with nuts. You have a bar at the bottom and then you have a pusher so obviously the tool is to push something up okay so you have the circlet there which then can be fitted okay so that is a no-brainer but there's more information yep circlet pliers are needed what type are they okay they're the ones that um, close actually they're snap-on ones but it doesn't matter they're actually quite large because that's what you need and then of course i've got lighting as well which is the torch magnetic base stuck to the chassis so there's some good information there isn't there there's a lot of information without me saying too much isn't there 
Okay, so what we have is a 60 plate Land Rover that give you the age of it, but your eyes are probably more attracted to the vehicle that's on the right hand side with the name of the firm on it, which is Abbey. Yeah, but you look on the left hand side down in the corner there, you can see a genuine parts box, which means it's a genuine parts, plus also the tools that are required a few spanners, um, pliers, and uh, circlip pliers. Yeah, and a uh, soft hammer as well yeah information that's really really important and i know now that your eyes are all over the place so some of you will notice the toolboxes others will notice the lorries um, some of you will just notice the daff on my back and others will notice the winch bumper and the electric plug socket next to it it's all information so what we have here is uh, installing something into the drop arm using a different tool ratchet but on the top here you can see that the hand is banging into the uh, damper changed it over a little bit more effort required at the bottom here which is not a ratchet spanner so you have a combination spanner at the bottom ratchet at the top yeah and you can see how close it is to the tire and the movement that's required to uh, wind this in okay so yeah we stopped on bottom the effort required wasn't actually that much so that's uh, information there again for you okay so now i've got your observation skills honed up you'll realize that i've had to do a fair bit of stripping on this citroen to remove the bearing carrier okay and uh, this is uh, something that was really urgent to do so we'll go over onto the bench and i will show you the condition of the bearing which was uh, water damage more than anything but yeah there's the carrier in the vice and the tools that i've used so here we go look this is the bearing which has water damage there's corrosion in there water has got in there it's uh, caused uh, pitting on the surfaces of the bearing rollers and the bearing face itself so that is uh, not a good situation the seal has failed so taking into consideration the bearing was in for a year but it only done 2000 miles so it was fitted at the start of 2020 and we had a lot of rain then didn't we before we had a nice summer and this area here is where i had to drive through so you can imagine already now where the water came from the blue spot tool that i've been using i did profile that on the channel a little while back telling you that it was value for money and i will stick by these words because look at the state of this this needed to come out you can see the pitting in here this was horrendously noisy yeah for a cheap bearing that cost 17 pounds from euro car parts not happy with that yeah that's a two hour job now the tool here and i'm going to big this up again you can go and have a look at the video the link will be below this tool here has paid for itself if you take into consideration the hourly rate of a garage okay and it takes two hours to change one wheel bearing which is all stripping out and then replacing it okay that is value for money incredible value for money so i've done about five wheel bearings so far with this kit and it's still standing strong so uh, yeah i can say blue spot tools yeah that's a good one big thumbs up from them Obviously, they want me to say that, but I won't say it unless I think it's actually valid. So it is with this one. And these wheel bearings do need a little bit of force to get them in and put them, uh, take them out and put them back in. So, yeah, there's a lot of stripping involved to remove the bearing carrier, as you can see. Um, this is um, something I had to do. You can see by the roof there, it's actually starting to become evening time now took me two hours in total just to strip out remove and replace the bearing and then fit it all back in again so where's the incongruency here in this video have a good look first of all it's not the tools on the bench or the light or the person walking past or the truck that's there or the fact that the lights are shining or i'm struggling just a little bit it's the fact i'm not using a torque wrench why simply because i didn't have the workshop manual with me i didn't have the data so i had to use a breaker bar and uh, use it by feel okay and these are actually very tight these carrier bolts but yes it will be talked up i have to have all this stripped down again yep so there we go that's that job done and you see the wings loose it's because i had to, to take and disconnect the abs sensor
Okay, so the last thing I'll tend to do is to reconnect the steering. Basically, what I'll do is reassemble everything and then check to make sure everything has good movement and nothing is loose, like so. Yep. So anyway, the uh, replacement bearing that I've put in here is a Borg and Beck one. Okay, they tend to have a good reputation. That was about 40 quid expensive. So we'll be happy with that. And that's the job done.